Hello everybody, this is Sindhu Shelley and this is a case study on a patient with iron deficiency anemia. Introduction. Mr. S is a 75 year old Hispanic male and he lives with his wife in a single story independent house. He presented to the primary care clinic with two weeks history of bilateral pedal edema and shortness of breath on exertion. Mr. S is usually the caregiver of his wife, but lately he feels tired and difficult to take care of his wife. Case presentation. Chief complaints were swelling of both feet and feeling out of breath at times. History of present illness. This 75-year-old male presented at his physician's clinic with onset of swelling of feet since two weeks. The patient reported that he did not notice any improvement in the severity of edema even after elevating his legs and wearing elastic stockings. He complained of shortness of breath and palpitation while climbing stairs and taking care of his wife. He is the caregiver of his wife but lately feeling weakness and inability to do the routine works at home. The patient denied any pain on his bilateral feet. He denied any episodes of bleeding, changes in dietary intake, bowel and bladder habits. Past medical and surgical history. Mr. S has a history of type 2 diabetes diagnosed 6 years ago. He described that his diabetes have been moderately controlled by medication, diet and exercise. He also has a history of chronic kidney disease stage 2. He had undergone cholecystectomy in 2013 and right shoulder surgery in 2000 for fracture of humerus. A little bit about his family history. He reported that his parents were pretty much healthy and both of them died due to natural causes at old age. One of his brother has a history of type 2 diabetes. No history of cancer, arthritis, hypertension and anemia were reported in the family. Results of clinical examination. Upon examining the patient, the clinician found that he had tachycardia, his heart rate was 90, pale with pale gums and pale nail beds, moderate swelling noted to bilateral legs and feet. His lungs wounds were clear. Um, with the history of chronic kidney disease stage 2 and findings on physical examination, we suspect that the patient has some kind of anemia and we went on order CPC and uh, some iron studies including serum iron, total iron binding capacity and serum ferritin. The results of the test were hemoglobin was 8.9 and hematocrit was 29.7. Uh, mean corpuscular volume was 72.8 so on the low side with the RDW red cell um, distribution with the 16.1. So with the MCV of low and the, you know, the high level of RDW, which is a typical um, uh, the indication for um, iron deficiency anemia, then um, MCH was 22 and uh, uh, mean corpuscular hemoglobin count MCHC was 30 grams, uh, which is um, actually the level of average concentration of hemoglobin in the red blood cells that was also low. Then the iron studies total iron was really low 19 microgram per deciliter. His ferritin level was 5 microgram per mm. That's also on the low side. But the percentage of saturation of serum ferritin was 4%. Um, and his um, total iron binding capacity that, that was high that um, 466, um, that's also an indication for iron deficiency anemia. Discussion. Generalized weakness, activity intolerance, dyspnea, palpitation, tachycardia, abnormal CBC and iron studies together with um, history of chronic kidney disease stage 2 and uh, physical examination findings, we come up with the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is a condition in which the body lacks enough red blood cells to transport oxygen-rich blood to tissues and organs. Iron is essential for the synthesis of hemoglobin, an oxygen-carrying protein inside the red blood cells. Blood loss, poor dietary intake, eating disorders, and inability to absorb enough iron from food are some of the causes of iron deficiency anemia. Pathophysiology 
Iron is in constant demand for the process of erythropoiesis. Iron is recyclable, therefore the body maintains a balance between iron that is contained in hemoglobin and iron that is in storage and available for future hemoglobin synthesis. So iron deficiency anemia can be classified mainly into two based on the causes. One is nutritional iron deficiency. It occurs due to inadequate dietary intake or excessive blood loss. In both, in both cases, there are no intrinsic dysfunction in iron metabolism. However, both cases depletes iron stores result in iron deficiency anemia caused by reduced hemoglobin synthesis. Second is metabolic or functional iron deficiency. It occurs due to metabolic disorders. Metabolic disorders leads to either insufficient iron delivery to bone marrow or impaired iron use within the marrow. Iron deficiency anemia occurs when the demand for iron exceeds the supply and develops slowly through three overlapping stages. Stage 1, the body's iron stores are depleted. Erythropoiesis proceeds normally with the hemoglobin content of RBCs remaining normal. In stage 2, iron transportation to bone marrow is diminished, resulting in iron deficiency erythropoiesis. Stage 3 begins when the small hemoglobin deficient cell enters the circulation to replace normal mature erythrocyte. Manifestations of iron deficiency anemia appears in stage 3 when iron stores are depleted and there is diminished hemoglobin production. Differential diagnosis. Iron deficiency anemia is classically described as microcytic anemia. The differential diagnosis for microcytic anemia includes thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia, some anemia of chronic disease and anemia due to lead poisoning. Patients with a sideroblastic anemia will have higher transferrin saturation levels which can differentiate them from patients with iron deficiency. Here, in the case of Mr. S, the percentage of saturation of transferrin level was 4%, is fully low. Differentiating between iron deficiency and uh, anemia of chronic disease can sometimes be difficult, especially in early iron deficiency. Patients with lead poisoning will have characteristic signs and symptoms of lead poisoning. As iron deficiency anemia progress, and the patient's serum iron drops lower and lower, each successive waste of new red cells get smaller and smaller. So there are some kinds of small cells and some cells are really, really small. IDW, the red cell distribution is high in iron deficiency anemia because there is wide variation in red cell size. As in case of Mr. S, the RDW was 16.1%. In mild thalassemia, the red cells are strangely all the same size. There is no variation. So the RDW is low. If the RDW is low, then um, that is probably thalassemia. And if the RDW is high, then that probably indicate iron deficiency anemia. As shown in this picture, there is a wide variation in the size of the width of this um, red cells. So uh, the RDW is high in this um, picture. So that's, um, that's an indication of iron deficiency anemia. Diagnostic test. The first test used to diagnose anemia is complete blood count, CBC. CBC tests your hemoglobin hematocrit levels. Hemoglobin is an iron-rich protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen to the body. Hematocrit is a measure of how much space red blood cells takes up in your blood. Low levels of hemoglobin or hematocrit is a sign of anemia. CBC also look for a mean corpuscular volume, MCV, RDW, MCH, and MCHC. Mean corpuscular volume is a measure of the average size of red blood cells. And it was, uh, in Mr. S case, it was only 72.8. MCH, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, is a measurement of oxygen-carrying hemoglobin inside red blood cells. 
and it was 22 um, in Mr. S case and MCHC was also low then um, other test if the if the CBC results confirm that the patient has anemia then patient need other blood test to find out what's causing the condition how severe it is and the way to treat it first test is reticular site count reticular sites are young immature red blood cells the reticular site count shows whether bone marrow is making red blood cells at the correct rate second is peripheral smear Blood is examined under microscope. Patient with iron deficiency anemia, red blood cell cells will look smaller and paler than normal. Test to measure iron levels. First is serum iron. Is, um, the test is to measure the amount of iron in the blood. It was really low in Mr. S case. Serum ferritin. Ferritin is a protein that helps to store iron in the body. A measure of this protein helps the doctor to find out how much of body's um, stored iron has been used. Transferrin level, the total iron binding capacity. Transferrin is a protein that carries iron in the blood. Total iron binding capacity measures how much of the transferrin is not carrying iron. Therefore, when a patient has iron deficiency anemia, patient will have a high level of transferrin that has no iron. Mr. Um, S case also the transferring level was high. Children um, also tested for the level of lead in their blood and then um, test and procedure for gastrointestinal blood loss to check whether internal bleeding is causing the iron deficiency anemia we can do a fecal occult blood test. Blood. Treatment for iron deficiency anemia depends on its cause and severity. First is dietary supplements. Foods rich in iron include animal proteins, legumes, dark green leafy vegetables such as spinach. If the patient is above 65 and the cause of anemia is chronic, then iron deficiency must be treated with a supplemental oral or parental iron. Supplemental oral iron therapy. Ferrous sulfate 325 mg TID. Um, the patient should continue to take supplemental iron for 3 to 6 months after normal levels in the blood and serum indices have been restored. Parental therapy is indicated only when there is documented failure of thera therapy with the oral iron supplements or severe iron deficiency. The clinician calculates the daily dose by subtracting the patient's mean corpuscular volume from the normal lower range value and then add 1000 mg to the delivered dose to cover the storage of iron in the body. Anaphylaxis is possible with the IV iron therapy. Initial dose should be delivered over 4 to 6 hours. Um, usually iron dextran is the, the least expensive of the IV iron formulation. In our case, Mr. S, um, doctor ordered a uh, Cerelisat 125 mg IV piggy bag twice weekly for five doses. Um, the uh, home health nurse, um, she also arranged a home health nurse to take care of this um, medication administration. And uh, treatment to stop bleeding. If blood loss is causing iron deficiency anemia, then treatment depends on the cause of bleeding. For severe iron deficiency anemia, blood transfusion. Transfusion of RBC will treat anemia right away. However, blood transfusion is only a short-term treatment. The clinician will need to find out, uh, find and treat the cause of anemia. Here's a research evidence about oral iron therapy. Systematic review of over 10,000 patients received different oral iron formulation revealed that gastrointestinal side effects seen with all oral formulations, ferrous formerate 43%, ferrous gluconate 31%, ferrous sulfate 30%. Other supplements such as iron protein succinate or ferrous glycine sulfate with n coating reduces absorption have lower frequencies of adverse effects. Clinical practice guidelines recommendation. The USPSTF recommends routine screening for iron deficiency anemia in asymptomatic pregnant women. And um, there is also evidence is insufficient to recommend for or against the routine iron supplementation for non-anemic pregnant women. 
USPSTF concludes that there is insufficient evidence to recommend for or against routine screening of iron deficiency anemia in asymptomatic children aged 6 to 12 months. And it also recommends routine iron supplementation for asymptomatic children ages 6 to 12 months who are at increased risk for iron deficiency anemia. Follow up. Iron deficiency anemia that is mild needs follow up every 4 to 6 months. There should be no need to retest iron stores after the first follow-up visit after initial diagnosis unless indicated by the history and physical examination. Referral is needed in case of serious pathology that could account for iron deficiency anemia. Patients with iron deficiency anemia due to chronic disease, a 30-day follow-up for the first six months after initiating therapy is needed. Education and family education. Education should focus on self-care and primary care management of the underlying cause of microcytic anemia. Patients with the iron deficiency anemia must be educated to perform the following self-care behaviors. First, take first of first on an empty stomach or at the most with a small snack. Eat foods that are rich in iron, vitamin C and B-complex vitamin, the ingredient for building RBCs. Remain as active as can be and if fatigued, rest before resuming activity. Self-monitor for fatigue, shortness of breath, pale colored stools and palpitation or tachycardia. Share information about iron deficiency so that friends or family can assist in adjustment that new health related behaviors will require. Additional patient education focus on primary care management that include patient need to understand the importance of timely clinical laboratory evaluations, return visit, signs and symptoms of anemia that should be reported to the clinician, and proper technique for administering or receiving drugs that must be administered through parental route. So this concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you for watching.